Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Caroline Makes Cards. Watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. I love the beautiful translucent quality it brings to an image. Now couple that with stencils, quick, easy and versatile. And look what you've got. Pretty spring cards featuring Simon Says stamps, stylized butterfly, floating leaves and fading florals. This set of slimline cards began by preparing the stencils. For this technique, you really do need to use a repositionable spray. I'm using Pixie Spray. After the stencils are sprayed, they're set aside for just a few seconds until that adhesive dries, and then they're popped onto Canson XL watercolor paper. I'm starting with the floating leaf stencil. This is a big stencil and I don't need to paint all of it. I had placed the die there just to make sure that I would have enough to create my panel. I'm going to be working with my Mission Gold watercolors for this project. I tend not to clean up previous color mixes from other projects. I use them and so I'm going to work with this pretty blue green that I have up in the corner. I'm going to add some water to it and I'll bring in some more paint as I need it. This is really a fun technique and as I became more confident that I was going to not get any seepage under the stencil, you'll see that I became more liberal with the water. The low tack adhesive does a good job of sealing off the edges of the stencil. Once this pretty color wash is laid down, I'm going to go in with a little bit of purple and add it just to the corners of those leaves. When I'm done, I go back with a dampened brush and just soften those edges where the two colors meet. Stenciling is fast and easy, and working with watercolors and stencils is no different. Now on to the butterflies. Stylized Butterfly is a stencil die set that Simon has put together. It has so much versatility that the stencil brings to this set, and then add the die for dimension, and in my books, that is perfect. So as you can see, I'm just layering on different colors, blues and greens to this butterfly. I'm using more or less the same palette, but I want it to stand out from the background, but be harmonious with it. The dies for this set include the wings and also the body of the butterfly. After the body is painted black, it's time to lift off that stencil. And as you can see, all of the details for this image are very sharp. I want to have two butterflies per card. I go ahead and reposition that stencil. The spray adhesive is good for a few applications. For the second butterfly, I change it up just a little bit so that there's some variation on the card. Although both butterflies have blue and green, the first one leaned more towards the blue tones. This one will favor the green. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with just how crisp those images are. After the stencils are cleaned up using a baby wipe, they're repositioned on a new piece of watercolor paper. This background starts with a rose color wash and then has a bit of purple worked into the corners of the leaves. This time, instead of using my damp brush to soften the lines between the two tones, I go ahead and just spritz it with my sprayer. Obviously, I had growing confidence that that adhesive was going to keep those edges sealed and the paint was not going to seep underneath. Now let's see if I'm right. Well, the butterflies are good, but they weren't sprayed with water. But look at that leafy background. Yay, because using that spray bottle is a time saver. The second stencil that I'm using is called Fading Florals. I'm going to start off with this stencil by spraying the entire piece with water. And then I'm going to take dark green, drop it into the corner of the leaves, and also paint the berry branches. The paper is pretty wet, so I'm able to just drop in the blue at the top of the leaves and it's going to blend with the green. 
After the berries are painted blue, I'm going to start working on the flowers. The centers of the flowers were painted yellow, and for the petals, I started off at the base with some red paint and then finished off with some rose. Again, there's quite a bit of water sitting on that paper, and so there's no need to worry about any blending. It's going to happen naturally. The butterflies are so easy to stencil. With a liberal color wash of rose, I just drop in some of that red paint into the corners of the details of the butterfly. For the second butterfly, the base is a blue color wash and then details of red. And there you can see we end up with something that favors purple. As the stencil is removed from the background, I think you can see how much water is on that panel. I do set them aside to dry for quite a few hours. I want the butterflies to have lots of dimension on the stenciled background and so they are going to be fussy cut. There's a die for the butterfly's body so I don't have to worry about that. You can see that there's a penciled outline. I use the die from the butterfly wings to trace around it but I ended up trimming it a lot closer. An unnecessary step as the outline of this stenciled image is very clear and easy to trim around. The backgrounds were die cut with Pink Fresh Studio slim stitched rectangles. Panels need to be dry before they're mounted on foam. It is easily tested for any moisture. If it is cool to the touch, it's not dry. If it's room temperature, it's good to go. The panels are set aside with some weight on them until that adhesive is completely dry. That gives me time to assemble all eight butterflies. All of the watercolored bodies are die cut and then the wings are die cut from white cardstock. Adhesive is applied to the section of the wing where it meets the body. The die cut openings are lined up with the stencil details. A few drops of adhesive between the wings and on goes the body. When trimming excess foam from around the panels, I like to use large shears. I press the blade right up against the side of the panel and take long cuts to ensure that the foam edge is smooth. These panels are then mounted on black cardstock that has been die cut with the largest die from Pink Fresh Studio Slim Stitched Rectangles. A variety of die cut sentiments from Simon Says Stamp were die cut from both foam and white cardstock. The foam die cuts are left in the background only removing the centers of the letter. After glue is applied to the foam die cut, the white cardstock one is stacked on top. The impression from the foam die cut makes it easy to align the cardstock one to it. Any small adjustments can be made using the craft pick in the center openings of the letters. The sentiments are set aside to dry for about 10 or 15 minutes before the excess foam is removed. The panels are adhered to sturdy card bases of Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock measuring 3 and 3 quarter inches by 8 and 3 quarter inches. The butterflies are staggered on the panels at a slight angle. Foam tape is used on each of the corners of the wings and a little bit of glue on the body. The body is held down for a few seconds until that glue sets. Once the foam back sentiments are adhered, it's time to do a little bit of embellishing. Iridescent confetti highlight both the butterflies and the sentiments. To enhance their sparkle, they're topped off with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. And that's a wrap on this set of slimline cards featuring watercoloring with stencils using a variety of Simon Says Stamps products. Floating leaves, fading florals, and the newest of them all, Stylized Butterfly. If any of these products catch your attention, you can find links in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate your visit.